edition of Last Bell Boxing. Busy show tonight. Obviously, we had a bit of a week off last week due to myself being abroad, although I didn't get much of a rest. Um, joined by Andy. Good evening, Andy. Good evening, mate. So we'll jump straight into it because obviously there's a lot to go through. Um, obviously, a couple of cards at the weekend and also a little story by the name of Connor Ben. So the first thing we're going to jump into this evening will be the zone card at the weekend. So you normally take it for the card. So if it's not broken, why fix it? Over to you. OK, uh, I've got the fantastic task of reading out some of these names. Yeah, yeah. That's just beautiful, mate. Thanks. Um, <laughs> yeah so uh, i'm not going to read the old card out mate um we'll just pick a few so we'll start off with probably the biggest ticket seller on the old card apart from katie taylor um johnny fisher he's going in against uh dominic musil i think his name is um interesting this one because this is a for me this is quite a, a good yardstick for johnny fisher because I think two fights ago, this guy was in against David Adelaide. Um, and David Adelaide stopped him in four rounds. It was an eight-rounder that they were in. I think Johnny Fisher's in a six-rounder. Um, the, the, the fight with Adelaide was eight rounds. Uh, the guy got stopped in, in four, retired. Um, I didn't see that fight, so I don't know why he was retired. Did you see it? No. So, so I'm not sure exactly what happened there, but um that's a bit of a yardstick in my opinion for, for where johnny fish is currently at because uh you could you could you know you could make an argument that that they're kind of on the same tra tra trajectory at the minute that's a long word for a for a thursday night um yeah you could argue david adelaide and johnny fisher are about <clears throat> the same stage Decent yeah, it's fight. interesting it's interesting because johnny fish let's be honest started this bit of uh project for Eddie and didn't say you know good tickets so he's done over two thousand for this show you know but all of a sudden people like Joe Joyce are taking him over to Vegas to spar him to get ready for podcast so he's looking better all the time he is yeah yeah he's, he, he's improving know. he's improving massively mate I think you're right I think initially Eddie and took him on he likes he likes these fighters that 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 make big numbers um Johnny Fisher certainly does that and he and Eddie Earn picks up on that really quickly with the fight so initially I think he bought him uh, he, he took him on for for his for his ticket sales he's a big old unit isn't it yeah and it, but he's, he's he's massively improved mate massively improved I'd like to see him in against David Adelaide I'd like to see how, the, how that fight had pan out because I think that'd be quite close be a good fight but yeah this Johnny, is I think Johnny Fisher taking himself a bit more seriously as well to be honest in so his he demeanor, should. he looks a lot yeah, more yeah. focused. Yeah, yeah. So he should. So he should, mate. He's still enjoy. He's still. He's enjoying life, mate. He's in. He's, he loves. Clearly, loves being a boxer. I mean, you hear the stories of. of um, I think it's his dad into that sells all the tickets for him. Yeah, yeah. You know, his dad. His dad basically delivers the majority of the tickets himself by hand. Um, and then after fights are done, Johnny Fisher puts on like a big party for everyone yeah. that's that's bought tickets, which is just brilliant. You know, very very savvy as well. It's very, yeah. very good marketing. It's it's really good. It's really good, mate. He, he, he don't forget where he's come from. He don't forget the people that have been there for him. I'm not saying other boxers do, but but this is a big um a big plus side in my opinion for Johnny Fisher. He, he, he's a very <laughs> likable character as well. I, yeah. I hope he goes. I hope he goes a long way. You know, is he, um and as you've said, he's a massive unit. Um, well, there's some great fights out for them, even at British level, isn't there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, this is there's loads, mate. There's loads that can be made, especially if he starts moving as well. You know, if he starts moving and progressing the way he's doing at the minute, he's he's going places with that shadow of a doubt. I I mean, uh, I expect Johnny Fisher to get a stoppage. I think it is yeah. a six round. I don't think it's a four. Um, that's what I'm seeing on on box rec, anyway. So that's what I've gone off. So if it's a six round, I, I expect him to to pull a stoppage out. Four rounds is a bit more difficult. You know, you've got to be on it straight away and don't suit every fighter. But uh, yeah, I, th I think I think he'll get a stoppage here. Yeah, I can't see anything but a stoppage for Johnny Fisher. I think he's on the crest of a wave at the minute, and he's probably a little bit better than I gave him credit for as well. If I'm being brutal, honest. Mm. 
Yeah, it's difficult, isn't it, to look past because it's happened so many times in the past with with um, not just Eddie Earn as a promoter. Lots of promoters do it, where they take on a fighter that that don't look like they've got much traction, don't look like they've got much of a career, and he has them for ticket sales, and then they milk it until that fighter loses a couple of fights, and then they get dropped and never get heard of again. And it, it it would be easy for us to think initially think that about Johnny Fisher, but that's not the case anymore. He's he's, he's proven you know he's proven any, any sort of doubt is wrong that that may have thought that you know. Swiftly moving on, uh, Ellie Scottney uh, is in a European title fight against Mary uh, Romero. Mary Romero currently sat at eight and two. With two knockouts, uh, Ellie Scottney's five and zero. Uh, last time she was out against um, Maria Cecilia Rome, uh, Roman, which who's a decent fighter. Uh, she's massively improved as well, in my opinion. Ellie Scottney, I think she's going places, mate. This is in the super bantamweight division as well. Yeah, I've got this down as being a ten rounder, and I think that's right because it's for a belt. European title, European uh, EBU uh, title on the line, I believe. I think this is this for a um, a mandatory spot as well, or I, or I've, I've read that wrong somewhere. I I, I don't know. Either, so. See see if you can see if you can check that while we're talking, mate. Um, this I mean this again. It's it. It's all. It's still still learning. It's very early in Ellie Ellie Scottney's um, career. She's she's only five and zero, um, and she's she's you know she's already got a, Euro, a European title fight, which is great. I expect her to 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 come come out victorious. I'm not sure whether she gets a stoppage. You know, she's not a big it's hitter. European. Yeah, she's not a big hitter. No. Um, so I, I see I see this going to points, but I think she'll. She'll come away victorious. Yeah, I, I don't think it's a gimme fight, is it, by any stretch? No, 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 no. no. You know, so I, I think these will have a bit of a war. I, I don't like say, Ellie Scott is not the biggest of punches at the minute. Um, so I don't expect this to go to it. I think it's Scott will win on points. Yeah, I agree. I agree. <clears throat> Moving swiftly on. Uh, lightweight division. Uh, Gary Culley, who... Yeah. Who is a uh, very highly thought of? Currently fourteen and zero. Um, he's going in against. You're going to have to bear with me on this. Is it J Jawad? God knows. Um, Belmadi, I think is. Yeah, Belmadi. Yeah. Uh, is his surname's pronounced? So we'll just go with his surname. Um, apologies for getting the the the. Is Christian name wrong? Uh, and this again is a very, very good fight. Yeah, Belmadi's not lost. Gary Cully's not lost. Um, Gary Cully's talking about about going going high and high quickly. Um, I've seen an article with him saying that within twelve to eighteen months he's going to be a world champion. Well, that's why that's why he's come over to Matchroom, isn't it? It's his first fight in Matchroom. He's come over purposely to move him through the levels quickly. It's a big, it's a big statement to make in a lightweight division, mate. When you look at when you look at the current, obviously current current um, undisputed champion is Haney. Um, he's tall though, and he's Ranger. He is. You know, the interesting one is he's, he's caught. He's, not really called out Maxi Hughes, but he's basically said if you don't get one of the one of the big belts, it'll be it'll be targeting Maxi Hughes for the IBO. Well, he beat Vasquez at, Vasquez last time, didn't he? So he's you know he's, he's, great performance that was. Beat him well, in March. So. He did. He, he did. But um, and if and if you look at uh, Bell Maddie's, he, he's been in with some real top talent, mate. Early on in his career, he was in with Crawford. Uh, yeah, uh, not Crawford. Sorry, with uh, Canelo, uh, uh, and that went to points. He's been in with Tim Bradley. That went to points. Re more recently, he's been with Lewis Ritson, um, 
a hot and Hora Davis. They both went to points with him. The only person out of that lot to stop him was Josh Taylor. Yeah. Um, Josh Taylor KO'd him in the ninth. So he's a very he's a very tough, durable uh competitor, mate. Um I expect a, a real a real barnstormer of a fight. Uh, but but yeah, the, uh, there's a lot of uh, Irish who got very high hopes for, for Gary. Collins. Yeah, I think Cully will stop him. I think he'll stop this guy late. Tough, tough character though, mate. This is a ten rounder. Tough character. I'm I'm not sure. Uh, he's got a de he's got a decent stoppage rate. Um, eight knockouts in his fourteen victories. In the presser today, though, he looked very hungry. He knows what match yeah, he can yeah, do yeah. for him. Abs absolutely, mate. He's he's on it. He's on it. Um. Bal Maddy can hit as well, though. He's got seven knockouts in his 16 fights. This is by no means a, an easy fight, mate. And to be honest with you, if he's aiming for those those heights, he's not going to get any easy fights going forward. No. I don't think he wants easy fights today. No, like, no, no. He wants to kick on. He does. Absolutely does. Okay. Uh, moving on to the co-main. This is a very intriguing fight, mate. Um, after his... Superhuman efforts last time out. Jordan friend of the Hill. show, I might add. Friend of the show. After superhuman, I, I I can't describe, mate. I can't describe what he did in that fight. I, I still don't. It still baffles me. Two burst eardrums. He's, he's almost out on his feet. He can't move around the ring because he's got no balance. He's leaning against the rope and he gets a knockout in the ninth round. With, it was quite interesting in the press conference today because Eddie Hearn drew, drew a lot of parallels with Lee Wood. Yeah, with the, yeah, fact, no. that George, with the fact that Jordan Gill and Lee Wood were at one point stretching around for fights, no promoters, no this, that, and now all of a sudden, because obviously yeah. this, is a, this is an eliminator, isn't it, for the IBF? It is. So if Jordan Gill was the, to beat Kiko Martinez, who's no pushover, by the way, I know he's on the slide in aging, but two-time world champion, it, it, he will get a world title shot. We've met Jordan Gill in person at various functions. He's a very nice kid, isn't he? Yeah. You know, he's put the hard way. Talks very well. So I, I think he beats Martinez. He's a very, um, very grounded character, Jordan Gill. There's no... <clears throat> there's no... Uh, ego there at all. He's, he's, he's such a level-headed fella. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to him. Uh, the last time we saw him. Um, and also, a, coming, coming on the show in a few weeks, by the way. This is a massive step up. Um, and it's what he wants as, 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 a, as a fighter. You know, he said it himself. He, you know, he wants these tests. He doesn't have to prove anything to anybody about heart, determination and grit. There's not many fighters would have stuck out what he stuck out in that last fight. Uh, I'm going with you, mate. I think Jordan Gill gets a, a late stoppage. Kiko Martinez, like you've just said, mate, is is no mug. He's no pushover. Yeah, he's getting he can bang. On. Yeah, he and can. he can bang. He broke Warrington's jaw, remember? Yeah, he can, mate. He can. His timing's still very good. And he's such a, a compact unit, mate. Jordan, Jordan needs to be very, very cautious early on for <clears throat> first four or five rounds he needs to be very cautious he's, he's a good he's a really good boxer jordan gill he needs to stick behind that and then later on sit on his punches and and he, he will get kiko out of there in my opinion and that just sets up an amazing future for him going forward it's it's um it's brilliant for him as well i mean the story of him and lee wood Jordan Gill was like the only person that was there for him when Lee Wood was uh, his real dark days. Apart from uh, Lee Wood's real close mates, you know, J Jordan Gill's been there for a long time for him. They've 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 been really really good pals for a long while. So to see them both in a position where they were they, where they where they both both be world champions, it's unthinkable, really. They're just a couple when of. A couple of normal lads who have, you know, who have experienced a bit like snake and ladders in the world of boxing. Into Eddie Hearn's yeah. often said that where one minute you're up, then you hit a bit of a bad patch, 
Yep. And you can quite easily be left without a promoter and you don't know where your next fight's coming from. They've experienced that. And now they're on the uppers a little bit, aren't they? So, and it's well-deserved for them both. Yeah, they had to scratch around for ages. Um, like you say, no one wanted no one wanted to give him a fight. No one wanted to back him. I mean, it's just the story. You you, you won't you you can't write it really. Um, yeah, but he he sets himself up. He's, he's this is his this is his biggest fight to date, mate, without a shadow of a doubt, and he knows it. Uh, and I don't think he'll slip up. I'm going no, for I'm, right. I'm going for a. Uh, I'm going for a gill stoppage round ten. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I'd go another round, but I don't be doing that just to be different. I've always fought round ten as well, so yeah. Okay, swiftly moving on. Katie Taylor um, against uh, Karen Carabajal. This one kind of kind of tells itself. I know. I, it, it, it's a mandatory it? so yeah. I mean, Karen Badger's record's good, uh, but I, I don't think she worries Taylor. I don't think she, I don't think she's any any massive shakes when it comes to to giving Katie Taylor any real issues. Uh, obviously, she can't be taking it lightly because she's she's got that big rematch with Serrano on the horizon if it happens. Uh, I mean, there's also there's also noise that Michaela may or might might step up. Um, I think it's more likely that it's going to be Serrano for a last fight. Boomgarden is stepping up as well, by all accounts. I think he's made the money, isn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, you might have a few more fights than we think, then, if that's the case. All I'd say is that, uh, obviously, Carabao, how you pronounce it, I believe it's a silent J. Um, she, she's not been beat, as yet. So, an unbeaten fight it can be dangerous. Yeah. Oh yeah, never, never tasted defeat. Argentina, we all know how tough the are in South America. Mm. So, but I agree. I think it's a case that Katie Taylor that class up. I think Kate, Katie Taylor gets back to her boxing in this fight, mate. Uh, she was in a complete war against Serrano, which could have gone either way. Good evening, Joe. How are you, mate? Good evening, Joe. Uh, could have gone either way. Uh, just talking about the the card for for Saturday night, Joe. We've just gone through the undercard. Um, thoughts on on Katie Taylor, mate? Before we move on, we yeah, have seen I, it. In the, we have seen it in the past, though. Just why Joe Tarts where they've got a big fight looming and they take the eye off the ball slightly. And it'd be easy for her to do that. I mean, how do you get up for a fight like this? I mean, she's professional. Don't get me wrong. How do you yeah, get up yeah. for a fight like this after? What happened at Madison Square Garden? It can't be easy. Um, knowing that that fight could be happening again for it in in Ireland as well. Um, I just hope she. I hope she doesn't take one fight too many, mate. I think she's got a couple of fights left in her. It has to be Serrano as the last fight, it, the biggest yeah, yeah. payday. It has to be. And I think I think Eddie Earn will deliver that for her. Um, yeah. I, 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 I wouldn't want to see her go one too many and get beat by someone she shouldn't lose to. So, shall we just move on while we wait for Joe's response? Yeah, yeah. So, we're going to move on to Conor Ben. So, just before we start giving our analysis, I just want to um, put on the screen a statement from the British Boxing Board of Control. And also the response has come out from Conor Ben's team, just so we're factually correct, Adler. Okay? okay. So I'm going to start with the British Boxing Board of Control statement. Are you, going to, are you going to read it out, Carl? So Robert Smith, by a notice dated 17th of October 2022, Mr. Conor Ben was called by the board of the British Boxing Board of Control to attend a hearing to deal with allegations of misconduct Persuasion to Rule 25.1.1. The hearing took place on the 21st of October. On the morning of the hearing, Mr. Ben voluntarily relinquished his licence with the British Boxing Board of Control. In accordance with its rules and regulations, the board determined the allegations following the hearing at which Mr. Ben was legally represented. 
the allegations of, of misconduct against Mr. Ben were upheld. So that's from the British Boxing Board of Control. Okay. And then Connor Ben's team has put this one out today. So I'm just going to get rid of the caption because it's blocking my view. So Connor's focus of this time is solely on clearing his name. The board, however, made it extremely difficult for Connor to focus on doing that by its conduct of unfair and biased procedure. In such circumstances, Connor decided not to renew his license, which had el elapsed. Connor told the board that if, I, if it did not accept that his license had lapsed, then he renounces it. So it's really small. He strongly refutes the allegation of misconduct, which for the for the avoidance of doubt is not in relation to the VADA issue, and firmly believes that an independent tribunal will reach a wholly diff, different conclusion. At the appropriate time, Connor will speak out on this and the doping allegation to the extent that he can what some legal procedures so my eyes <laughs> whilst sorry let me start again that whilst legal proceedings are ongoing in the meantime he reiterates in no one circumstances to borrow the glasses that is cl a clean <laughs> athlete there we go i think that's quite a good effort for that size text i can't see it mate and i've got glasses on so there you have to, I will leave it on the screen for people just a couple of seconds longer so they can read it themselves. <laughs> so, hopefully you made that out while I was reading it because it was on the screen. It'll be bigger to you guys when you watch it back. Andy, what's going off here? Uh, uh, I don't know, mate. Uh, good evening, Cedric uh, from Canada. By the way, mate, um, I re this apparently, this apparently is to do with something else completely yeah. different. But but what? Because they haven't come out and said misconduct. What does that mean? Is 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 Connor Ben kicked off at the board? Has he said something to the wrong person? By all is accounts, he's done a lot of videos today that will be dropping tomorrow. So, by all accounts, we'll, we'll understand tomorrow, according to Eddie Irving. It seems like the British Boxing Board control is saying one thing and Con is saying another against yeah. a backdrop of an of a ongoing legal issue, obviously. Because, you know, them two statements tell you a little bit, but don't tell you everything, do they? Well, but, and, and, and the, to be honest with you, the board statement tells you absolutely nothing. All it says is that Conor Ben's his licence. He didn't go. He, he's clearly not happy with the British Boxing Board. Rightly or wrongly, he's clearly not happy with the way that he, that he, he feels he's being treated. Um, again, rightly or wrongly. Um, I'm not in a position, and I don't think you are either, either Carl, to judge Conor Ben at the minute. No. Nope. I know a lot of people have. A lot of people have given their opinions. A lot of prominent people in boxing have given their opinions. I'm not prepared to do it until I know a bit more, until I know what's going on. Um, I just what frustrates me about the statement from the British Boxing Board is the same misconduct, but they're not saying what the misconduct is. It's as clear as mud. Yeah, uh, just come out and tell us. If you if, if you're gonna if you're gonna say misconduct, then just say what it is. The only thing I don't then, really understand is though why Conor Ben has gave his license up for the British Boxing Board. I, I well. think he's given his license up, mate. It's expired. He knows he can't fight anyway, currently. Um <laughs> They're clearly not going to sanction any fights until uh, the, these allegations of of the the, the failed drug, drug, drug test get sorted out. So he's he's thinking to himself, well, what's the point me? What's what's the point me renewing it at the minute? Let me concentrate on what I'm doing. This is what I think the, the Ben's team are thinking. Um, I'm going to concentrate on clearing my name, and once that's done and dusted, then I'll sort my license out. If the board allow him to do that, but the board statement is talks about something completely different now. 
have things happened in the background at the at the fight um week with Conor Ben as he as he done or said something he shouldn't have done and shouldn't have said? Is that the misconduct or is it since then? As you know, it's a very, then... it's a very vague statement, isn't it? It could be anything. Yeah. So just put your comment from Joe. So Joe says smoke and mirrors from Ben can't be charged what by the board. Or investigated by you, Cad. Now he's not licensed. Yeah, no, he can. He can. He can. Ben, 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 Ern, Cala, Montana have all brought the sport into disrepute. Get rid of all of them. Let Let me just correct you a little bit there, Joe. I, I know what you're saying, um, but my belief, and, and and I've heard this from a couple of boxers that have done interviews now. My belief is the board will still fully investigate the VADA uh, findings. If he's found guilty, if the if the allegations stick, then if he comes back in a year or two years' time thinking he can have his licence back, he won't be allowed to have it. They'll, they'll, the, 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 the ban will start from when he tries to take his licence back up again. So, Bob's historian says, Eddie Hearn said in a talk sport interview with Alan McCoy's, that he relinquished his title to avoid the four-year ban. Um, supersedes use I haven't seen it. No, but I have seen that interview. So it's surprised that we haven't seen it yet. I have seen that interview, but I didn't see the bit about him giving up his title to avoid a ban. If I'm honest with you, I didn't think see, that was the case. The thing is, boxing is strong. You've just said it yourself. That's come from Eddie Earn. That's not come from the British Boxing Board, has it? So until the British Boxing Board say, well, now Ben's relinquished his, his, his licence, we can't charge him or we can't investigate fully and then from the results of that, charge him down the line. Because I, I still think they can, even if he's not got a licence. I mean, it would be a bit ridiculous, wouldn't it? Because everyone would do it. Let's just take drugs. Let's get caught. Let's give my licence back and then six months later, take it back up again and I'll still be able to box. There's got to be something so, in there. There's got to be a law that says that, that can't happen. So Lee Brown says, good evening, Lee. Um, I believe the misconduct is in relation to the handling of the situation. Now, I could see that. I could see why they'd want to investigate the handling of it. But why would that be against Ben and not against Matchroom? Yeah. It'd be, it'd be a good question where that sits in terms of responsibility. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Folks, this story said, totally get what you mean, guys. I just think he's at least guilty of the cover up of it. I mean, there's, there's it, also it, it's all got to come out in the wash, hasn't it? We the, the, the challenge we've got is we're, we're filling a lot of blanks ourselves, yeah, aren't yeah, we? Yeah. yeah. And hopefully, yeah, when tomorrow, saying, ale it? allegedly tomorrow, we're going to get a lot more information. Ben's going to come out and then give some interviews. We might start to piece this together a little bit, but that's what this show is all about debating, you see. So, so yeah, it is. And like, and like I've said, I'm not prepared. Anyone else can say what they want, they can frame under the bus. Um, everyone's allowed their own opinions. It, it doesn't look good, it's not a good look for boxing. It's even, it's even a worse look that they try to keep the fight on with that hanging over, over Ben. The right thing would have been, in my opinion, for Eddie Earn and for Callis Island to, to come out. As soon as that come out, even though they knew about it weeks pull before, it. which, which is even worse. Yeah, pull, pull the card straight away. It would, it would have made them look a lot better. The problem is they didn't do that. They tried to push it and push it and push it. And in my opinion, the only reason they pulled it in the end was because of all the bad publicity it got. I mean, one thing that Eddie Earn has said today, I don't mind saying it's on camera because it's out there, is that if Conor Ben doesn't clear his name, we won't promote him again. He won't promote Conor Ben again. So he was by that, I'm assuming he's very confident that he's going to be able to clear his name. Yeah, yeah. But but the thing is, he's got to say that because how many times in the past has he come out and said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm pulling a fight against another fighter because that fighter's yeah, I mean, it, it was all over. It was all over Canelo's drug test a few years back. When was that? Four years back or so. And now he couldn't get any further up Canelo, uh, Canelo's arse if he tried. Yeah, I mean, I, I hear in terms of Conor Bennett, I know I've had a lot of things to say about Conor Bennett in terms of the boxing side of it. 
in terms of how good I think he is and uh, you know or maybe I don't think he's that good you know that might be more accurate but he does deserve the chance like we all do to clear a name you know so a lot of people are, are finding guilt, guilty to, to prove an innocent rather than isn't to prove proven guilty so yeah yeah let the lad have his chance to prove his name you know we wouldn't like it would we you know that's it that's his let's be honest is that's his career we're talking about yeah yeah so yeah. box the historian don't worry about that in terms of a few beers of a week we've all done, we've all done it, mate. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah we've all been there so in terms of Connor ben we'll have to watch this space i'm assuming it's all going to come out in the wash so hopefully Connor gets a chance to clear his name he, he must be confident I, i'm not sure you know he must, it's going to cost him a lot of money this investigation let's be honest it's already cost him a lot of money you know what um, what i'm kind of struggling with a little bit is how does he clear his name because it, I, I mean what what obviously what they're going on is that the the a sample is tainted it's got contaminated contaminated somehow well, my understanding is what they're going on is the, the trace that they found, whatever this is, I'm not going to get too scientific because I'm not a scientist, but by all accounts, you're going to prove that it wasn't performance enhancing. The amount that they found in his system was not performance enhancing, is my understanding. Because there's no doubt it's there, is there? Well, it's in the test. Uh, you know, we've had a... We've had a a very prominent um, member of the boxing community on the show last week, Roberto Diaz from Golden Boy Promotions. Um, and he knows he knows all too well about our, our, our tests can be con contaminated from certain things. He, he actually talked about, I know it's a completely different thing, he talked about clenbuterol, didn't he? And about um, how Mexican farmers use it to beef up the, the cows yeah. to sell them in Mexico. And, and you know, and they think that's how it got into, into Canelo's system and all that. He wasn't even prepared to throw Conor Ben under the bus. He was, he, was, he was thinking the same way as us, give the guy the chance. He was very respectful. Give the guy the chance to clear his name. And he's, he's, he's spent 30, 40 years in the business. He's seen it all, done it all. So if he if he's going down them lines, mate, I'm not going to argue with that. No, he's a very level-headed character, Roberto, and um, I'm not going to I'm not going to go against anything he says there. Uh, but everyone's it's plain entitled. and simple for me. It's plain and simple. I'm not going to get into a witch hunt for Conor Ben. It's no. all about wait for the facts. You can't yeah, come yeah. to with a decision until you wait for the facts. Everyone's entitled to their opinion, though, Carl. If people want to, they are. Want to make the make the decision that that is is guilty? That's up to them. That's that's their opinion. Um, a lot of people have already done it. A lot of people have said he should be banned. A lot of people have said, uh, but a lot of people have said if he is guilty, he should be banned. Um, do you want to pick that um, comment up from Boxing Story? Yep. So Boxing Story says he could probably be billed even bigger in fights now, meaning more fans will want to watch him open his. his he lost like the villain character so i think after the dust settles he's still so far so i'm not sure how big a ticket seller he was anyway if i want this boxing story we've had this debate on the show previously um so he says i am a good pr person and he'll be all right i think that's eddie Earn who's gonna be doing that so yeah interesting yeah um I don't know. I, I I think I think the British public were were starting to fall in love with the drama and the the air around Conor Ben, like they did his dad. Um, but this hasn't done him any favours. There's going to be a lot of people that were rooting for Conor Ben. That, that I mean, let's were. spirit for for you, Bank Junior, and all this as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, I don't understand. Just think, talking about Eubank Jr. for a second. He's made weight. He's cut himself right down to, to middleweight. I'm sure he was probably sat at middleweight or just under. Um, I think he did a... He jumped on the scales, didn't he? And he was 
159, was he? 158 or something like that, just to prove he got down there. Why has he not took a fight? Why has he not? There's plenty of fights out there that, that he could have made to at least make himself some money back, to get to get money back from camp. He's, he's, he's going to have shelled out a lot of money, mate. I know he's I know he, I know he's loaded. It it probably isn't a drop in the ocean to him, but that's not the point. I think from a boxing perspective, it would have been sensible to jump in and around yeah. that way just to see how it feels. Yeah, before yeah. He, because listen, I still think this fight happens. I still think it happens early uh, first quarter of next year. I think this will all be resolved. I, I think the fight will happen. There you go. You've had an exclusive. We'll see, so, mate. Um, we'll we'll I see. Think it happens. <laughs> Yeah, you're right there, boxing historian. You're right. Right, moving on then. So let's cover this. Apologies, one. apologies for that in the background, by the way, guys. Can't be helped. What, 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 what happened when you're working with amateurs? But moving on. <laughs> so let's cover this one next. And so David Avenition versus Crawford. Penciled in for 10th of December. I've not seen anything official yet, though. Um, maybe someone has. I've been away, so I've not seen the official post. So I don't know if you have, Ander. Yeah, it's it's official, mate. Right, so I understand it's going to be um, in Nebraska, which is obviously Crawford's backyard. And I understand it's going to be on a um, BLK, BLK Prime in the stage, which is a streaming platform. They're going to be paying... Brand, brand new, aren't they, as well? For $39.95. So I don't, I don't know who's picked up in the UK yet, if anybody has. Has anything been announced last week, Ander? So again, sorry, mate, I didn't hear that. Has anyone, has anyone, has it been announced which TV platform picked up in the UK whilst I've been away? No. No. So that'll be interesting to see. Um, obviously, we've got links with Carl Greaves in, and the Newark gym. We've interviewed David Ava at Evanesian um, in the past and we'll be doing in the future. I think this is a great fight. Um, I know everyone wants the Errol Spence fight, don't they? You know, we all do, to be honest. But this will be, you know, don't, let's not sleep on David Evanesian. He ain't no walkover. So no. Um, let's um, let let's just let's just clear one or two things up here for a second. I'd I'd like actually I'd like the American um, opinion on this to ease. Uh, I'd like your opinion on this, mate. Um, and if if Cedric's still there in the sidebar, uh, your opinion as well, mate, on on our yeah, you may as well Cedric because Canada's just America <laughs> anyway. So I, just... I mean, how uh, th uh, this is going down over there? How it's being reported? Um, because there's there's been a lot of negativity in in social media around um, around David Avenisian and people saying, oh, you know, this fight's a joke. He's not worth a world title. It's absolute crap, that. It's absolute crap. David Avenisian's right up there in the top rankings. Of and right up there in terms of being avoided as well. No one wants to fight him. Uh, he's having to, he's having to, or he's had recently, he's, he's had to defend his European title against people that just aren't on his level. And he's, he's knocking them over way 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 too easily that's no good for him but what can they do uh, what is what what do people expect him to do? do do they expect him to give up his european title and just sit and wait because it could be i mean this this fight's come along and it's crawford that's asked for david avenison by the way just to get a few facts fact straight they came to neil marsh and frank warren and asked for david avenison and the fight was made in the fight was made in forty eight hours just to another myth. 40, 48 hours. The fight was done and dusted. So, what's David Avenisian supposed to do? Is it what? Do, do, do Frank Warren and Neil Marsh turn around and say, "Oh no, we, we don't want we, we don't want to take that fight. We want to see Crawford going against Spence." It's just ridiculous. The comments that are coming in are ridiculous and downright disrespectful. People that think David Avenisian is not at that level, just wait and watch the fight. And then tell me that David Avenis is not at that level. He's an animal. He's an aggressive, I mean, all, forward uh, fighter. Win, He's an animal. Win, win or lose for Avenis, and this is his coming out party. I think I think he gets announced announced to the world stage. Could he'll give Crawford the thing the is, he's, 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 he's had the, prep, for a the thing long is, he's, he's been there, mate. He's been there on the world stage. Um. He's a better fighter now, though, Ander. He's a much better fighter because because he's 
he's improved massively under Cole Greaves. Cole Greaves has basically turned his volume up from six to ten. Um, the thing is, he's not American. So you wanted to and come in from America. Here we go. Just landed. So Therese says, David is a name boxing enthusiast. No, but not the bigger masses. Spence versus Crawford is what they are set on. They're not going to get it, though, Therese. Spence versus Crawford is never going to happen. Too much politics. Too much politics. Too many, too many independents involved. Different networks. It's just... And the two fighters... The two fighters think they're above each other. Um, it just goes to show you, this fight got done in 48 hours, like we've just said. If two fighters want it, it gets done. If two promoters want it, it gets done. They're not even worried about the, the, the network in the UK at the minute. That'll get made. They're not worried about that. You know, I just... I'm frustrated with, with, with all of it. I'm frustrated with the whole situation. Of course, everybody wanted to see... Spence Crawford, who's the best in the division before they both passed it because they're not far off like a few more years and they'll be they'll be in the twilight. And 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 it wouldn't surprise me if Crawford moves up after this fight as well. Uh Spence the thing is, who's El, who's El Amin's business partner partner, Floyd Mayweather. What was Floyd Mayweather very, very good at? Picking off fighters during this, the twilight of their career. Yeah, so was. let's not be surprised that that's a blueprint moving forward. So just big comment up it by Joe. It's a tough ask for Ava, but he will put on a good show. But ultimately, he'll come up short. No shame in that against Crawford. Fair enough, Joe. Um, Craw Tweez says, Crawford is taking a lot of slap because the fight was pretty much lined up while he was acting. Like you want to spend. I think you want to spend, but it just couldn't be made. The fight was not lined up to ease. You've got that completely wrong, mate. We're going to be... There's going to be an interview landing on our show in the next week with someone very close to the situation. I'm not going to say who, uh, but it will be landing. So please keep a tabs out for this interview that we're going to do because it will clear everything up. And tabs means ears, by the way, for North American Sorry. colleagues. <laughs> yeah, keep your ears out, um, keep your eyes out. Um, this interview will clear everything up. But this fight was not done and dusted. Crawford got sick and tired of hanging around and waiting for things not happening, and he decided to take matters into his own hands and make his own fight. Simple as that. <clears throat> and, le and let's be right, let's be right. David Abanisian is sat in the top five in the majority of the governing bodies. And if you go down the rankings, he was the only one available of, of the top five. So Here's a prediction for you. I reckon that... Um... Hi, Lee, you all right? Hello, mate. How are you doing? You all right? I'm Sam, right, Lee. Yeah, Sam. So just about to make my prediction. So my prediction is that after Avenetians for Spence... So after he's for Crawford, he'll fight Spence. Win or lose, he'll fight Spence afterwards. Because they're going to use him as a yardstick. That's what they're going to do. So probably Lee, probably right. And, and, and why wouldn't he take it? Why wouldn't he take them fights? Why wouldn't he? So, Lee, um, I'm Carl. So we've not met each other before. So nice yeah. to meet you. How you doing, mate? So, you all right. What are your thoughts on Evan Easton versus Crawford as a fight? I think it's a brilliant fight. I, I saw a lot of... Um... There was a lot of backlash about it actually, which I was um I was a bit surprised about. But I think the backlash is because people wanted the Spence fight. But yeah. um yeah. I think people people who understand boxing, um not just the casuals, I think they know how good David Venusian is. Um maybe out in America he hasn't sort of had that that reach. Um but he's a class fighter, and it's not that's not going to be a walk in the park. Not well, last time he went to state side, Lee, it, it wasn't a great performance by Evanesian, was it? So I think that a lot of him may be judging him on that performance. But let's have it right. Since then, he's up to up with a new trainer in Carl Greaves. And I'd argue he's a totally different he's a lot he's more dangerous now than he was back then. Yeah, well, I think he's had a, his last few fights, he's had some really good wins, hasn't he? And let's let's not um get away from the fact that 
people won't fight him because he's high risk for low reward. Yeah. So people know that they're not going to get the payday that they want to get from fighting someone as dangerous as him. So you can't blame fighters for not taking that fight. But and that's where I think before. I mean, this is a risk for Crawford because I know you say he gets a Spence fight afterwards, but do you really think Spence is going to then agree to the same purse split if he's coming off the back of a loss? He's probably not. But then you're going to have to talk about the rematch and it could get messy. So from a Crawford point of view, I've seen him getting a lot of a lot of hate from it, but I think you've got to take your hat off and respect him that he hasn't been able to get the Spence fight made for whatever reason, but he's taken this fight and I think it's a great fight. And the thing about Ava is a come forward pressure fight, isn't it? Gorf is not going to get a minute's rest. No, I, I, I totally agree with you, Lee. Um, I, I see the opposite to the rest of the people. You got yeah. to give Craw Crawford massive credit for, yeah. for for taking this fight. I mean, he's yeah. he's he's actually called out Avenesian. Yeah. You know, it's it's not a mandatory. He's chosen David Avenesian as as the fight he wants. He's earned that shot, though. He has earned that shot, mate. Absolutely, 100% agree with you. And I think Crawford is looking at David Avenesian from 2016. Yeah. yeah he's, he's, not looking at, he's not looking at David Avenesian from now. And the thing is, he'll look at... Argue, he'll, though, also, could, also, also, Carl, he'll be looking at David Avenesian's last few opponents and going... And going yeah, you're being they're, not, they're, not, they're not world level. Yeah, yeah. Um, what but I would then, say though, Crawford could his stock could rise even higher on the back of this fight because Evan Eason is a bit of a boogeyman in that boogeyman in that division. Yeah, I was just about to say, um, you have to give Craw Crawford massive credit because nobody else in the top five of any of the ranking bodies want anything to do with David Evan Eason. None of them. Is, we we know that, but how many people do know that? Like, um, well, in, in that America, aren't that keen on boxing, like no. Casual fights, probably like watching Crawford when he fights, like watching Spence when he fights. And yeah, but Lee, I would argue, Lee, I would argue Crawford's not particularly a massive name to the casuals. Not I over in think... the UK. I mean, no. we, we had this, we had this conversation, Lee. We had this. Com I'm, uh, sorry to bring his name up again. We had this conversation with Roberto Diaz last week mm. when we did an interview with him, and I asked his opinion on why Crawford and Spence are not world famous stars the talent that they've got the talent that they've got they should be on the end of anybody's lips in in sport in america i know yeah. boxing's not where it used to be and american football and, and uh, baseball and basketball are, are higher priorities now yeah. but even so the talent they've got they should be right up there like in back in the 80s with uh agler and Ernst, lennon duran yeah they're still talked about now yeah, I don't think in thirty years' time, anyone's going to talk about Spencer Crawford. I'll put that down to the promoters. Uh, I think well, you've got, and you've got there's, Bob a problem, there's a pricing Probably. problem in America with boxing as well. I mean, you're talking the, the amount for pay per views in America. Who can, what boxing fan in America can keep up with that? No one. Yeah, you just, look, at being, look at the wild big, fight. Look how many buys that done the other week. It was shocking. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just pick a few comments up on the side. So Ryan says, good evening, Ryan. Crawford ain't looking at his resume. He's looking at the paycheck he's getting. By all accounts, this will be his highest check of his career. Yep. BLK Prime will be out of business in a year. Um, I think that's um, free. He's offered a free fight deal to Broner. Um, in 12 months, takes 12 years to get free fights out of Broner. Um, Tui says their talent is all world, but they are not marketable per personas. I mean, like I've said, you've got Al, Al Heyman, who no one ever sees anything of. You've got Bob Abbott, who you could argue is, is, is the way of promoting very outdated, and he hasn't really got a social media presence. So it should be easier this day and age, really, because you've got social media, which is global. But yeah. for some reason, Crawford and, and you could even argue Spence. I mean, Spence came over and gave Kel Brook um, a little bit of a beating in his own backyard, yet his profile still hasn't grown that much in the UK. But he's so, been he's been quite inactive, hasn't he? To be yeah, fair. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah, there's been a lot of issues. Um <clears throat> but 
I go back to it. The, the fighters are not, are not helping themselves, though, Carl. They could be um, more prominent on social media. They could be getting themselves the profile that they need to be getting. Like, like Ryan Garcia does. Exactly. Does. Yeah. Exactly Ryan, like Ryan, Ryan Garcia. Garcia is a blueprint, isn't it? Yeah. You know, but ultimately, they're not all, a boxer's is not always a talker, are they? You know, oh, whereas no. your promoter should Understood. be the talker. Understood, mate. But these boxers are rich enough to have social media teams, aren't they? Yeah. You don't have but to do again, why, why have a promoter then? By, by essence of the name, the promoter should be doing that for you in terms but they of don't, profile. But they, they don't in America, though, do they, Carl? All the promoter does in America is put a fight on. Doesn't so, anything else. Comments to the side. It's entertainment at the end of the day, and they are not entertaining people. Amazing athletes and even better boxers, but that isn't everything. Joe said, boxing is a minority sport in the States. There's so many other sports that end up boxing. Ryan says, Ryan's not one for holding back, as we know. Um, Bob effed up by not feed Batman to Bud would boost his Crawford's name massively. So, yeah, Ryan, don't, don't sit on that fence here, Ryan. <laughs> so, very, very interesting. You know, very, very interesting scenario. Interesting that they seem to have another platform in the States who are going to Give him a run for the money. Have you, have know, you seen know, Corona's I... announcement? Yeah. No. It's shocking. Um, I've, I've never seen anything look more budget in my life. The screen behind him was all creased. And oh, really? Yeah. I, going off what I've seen so far, I'm not um, overly infused by this new stream. Well, well Eddie says Broner spoke about billions in previous years. Now he's talking about millions. So that's how, I mean, Broner's career stalled horrifically, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, he's he's not he's not the, he's not the fighter that everyone expected him to turn out to be. To be honest, I don't. I mean, to be to be honest with you, whatever these, even if this this new promotion make the main guys sit up and pay attention and do a bit more, that's good enough for me. It smells of Satanta to me. Satanta and Bob yeah, it, it, people maybe like so, that. maybe so, Carl and Ryan might Allegedly. be right. Ryan might be right in in um. In a year or two's time, they might be gone. But no one else is bringing his Avenician v Crawford, are they? No. No. And I'd imagine Avenician's not going over there. You know, he must have a good purse, I'd imagine, you know? So it'll probably be his best payday, won't it? But, but to be honest with you, you're right. It probably is. But I'm telling you right now, David Avenician isn't in this for the paycheck. No. He wants massive fights. It get, well, get a big payday off the back of this, regardless of as long as he puts in a good performance, which he will. He will yeah. It's a perfect fight for David Evanesian because exactly. let's have it right. His stock's going to rise whether he wins or loses if he puts yeah. a you know performance, and it opens and, all the merit up. To and it. I tell you what, as well, this is the perfect match of styles. Perfect. Styles this is going to be it's going to be a brilliant, brilliant fight. Hmm. Yeah, I'm excited for it. Do we know so, where it's going to be on in the UK yet? No, not yet. No. Oh, no. We, if you had to put your last, if you had to put your last pound on it, Lee, which which broadcaster picks it up? I'd imagine Sky. I'm going BT. I, I'm going to go BT because they they promote Avenesian. To be honest, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, BT do, don't they? With Warren, so yeah, 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 you probably are right. Yeah, and then you've got the fight TVs drifting around, haven't you? You often pick up some. Yeah, who was it that um, Cal Brook fought Crawford on? That was on. A, that was that was picked up on a random one, wasn't it? Can't remember who it was, but don't think it was on Sky, was it? Cal Brook, poor team. No, Crawford. Oh, oh, recent, recently, recently. Mm. Um, I can't remember what who picked that up in the end. No, no, it was Sky. I'm sure it was Sky. Was it Sky? I'm not sure. I think he was Sky, wasn't he? Yeah. It adapted clock at night. Joe's, so, Joe, Joe's put fight TV. What for? Yeah, I thought I'm, it was I'm assuming. Movie. I'm assuming he means Crawford Brooks. So Ryan hmm. says, "Who do you think the UK investor is in?" In I think that should be BLK. Apparently, a famous UK boxer is involved. I've not All seen right. that. Not seen no, that either. And then yeah, I, don't I, I don't know about that one, mate. No, no, I don't either. 
<laughs> I don't either. <laughs> hey, you know what? You know what? You know what? As well, it's this just goes to show how boxing swings dramatically in the space of a few months. It wasn't mm. long ago that social media was full of people basically laughing at David Avenison for fighting middle of the road European fighters. Now, just to put a bit of context to that, when he when he's defending his European title, the mandatory challenger gets the option of the fight. And they never take it. They wow, then go I the really week. enjoy this boxing lesson. Go they, on, they go on, the I'm enjoying this. Let me make it. a few notes, Andy. Hold on. Do you, know why, do you know why I'm saying it, though, Carl? I'm not saying it to you, because I know that you know, but there's lots and lots of other people that just don't get it. They think mm. that they think that Warren's gone out and find and, and found a European bum for Avenison every time he's, he's fought. That's not the case. They've taken the best opponent that would take the fight. Well, it did make me smile when... Frank Warren had to go down the box rep list. I was it on Wednesday during the Tyson Fury press conference. Yeah. How many yeah. times he go down that list? Every interview, wasn't it? Yeah, it made me smile that day. I was like, all right, Frank. All right. But yeah, as I was saying, it, it's it, it, it's it's amazing how it's swung around. So you got all these people that were slagging Avenisian off for them fights. Where are they all now on social media? Where you know, where are they all slagging him off now? Are they for taking taking on Crawford? Yeah, Tweez is taking notes as well, under. So <laughs> thanks, Tweez. I appreciate that. There might be a career <laughs> in this for you. <laughs> you never know, mate. You never know. <clears throat> Zone might be watching. Yeah, hey, it took you six months to learn how to say that. <laughs> <laughs> right. So on that note, we're tight for time tonight, guys. Aren't we? So Andy, I'll let you take it out tonight. Um, yeah, because I'm still jet lagged. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bit of a bit of a short one tonight, lads. Um, I know we normally go on for an hour and a half, two hours at times. Uh, thanks to everyone in the sidebar. Thanks for joining us on screen, Lee. Nice to join you. Appreciate you having me. No you problem. Stay with us, Lee, aren't you, for when we finish? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Thanks. Thanks for everybody in the in the sidebar. Your comments are always more than welcome. Let's have a few more of you on screen, though. Uh, I keep trying to get Joe to come and join us on screen. Uh, it's not happening. I think he's a bit shy. Maybe next week, Joe. Eh? Well, if you give another boxing lesson on the commercial aspects of boxing, he might jump on. <laughs> I might make it. A, I might make it a weekly thing. My little slot on the on the show, Carl. Yeah, I won't be on it. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that your version of taking us out, Andy? Is, it, is that it? Yeah, well, I, I was I was halfway through until you jumped in, pal. Go on, I'll finish off then. All I was going to say was. Um, as usual, guys, every Thursday, 7 o'clock, come and join us. This show's about you at the end of the day. That's what we made it for. It's for boxing fans to give us uh, their opinions, and it's always going to be the case. Thanks for joining us. Well, after that for you, Blitz, and I better finish off, and So that's Bell Boxing, live Thursday, every week, 7 p.m., platform for the fight fans. Feel free to join us. Like is going live straight after the show on Saturday, after the zone card also. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you next week. Thank you very much.